guys and welcome to Nickrit. In today's video I'm going to be going over a different version of my original Tawashi uh, sponge pattern. I have a video on this that I'm gonna link actually over this region and um, you can see how I did it originally. This is just an updated version where I actually like how I do this a uh, little bit better. I changed a couple things in the pattern but not that much that like it's not going to change the general uh, shaping of it. So if you already know how to make a Tawashi, essentially I'm just going to be doing every other, um, every, every other other row. So I'm going to be doing two rows of uh, normal cotton and then two rows of scrubby yarn. I'm today I'm using uh, just two I love this cottons from uh, Hobby Lobby. This one's I love this cotton. This one's their scrubby uh, brand that they have very yellow in this one. This is the same exact color actually, it's just the yellow part of the pattern, and I mean, the yellow part of the yarn instead. Um, so basically I've done a couple things different that I'll uh, get to when uh, we get there. I change where I do my increasing and my decreasing. I essentially um, do it one stitch in instead of uh, at the very uh, edge of my um, piece here. So um, I'll show you how I do that uh, when I get there. I still do my normal cast on of 25 stitches. This looks better and it's neater. And I find with the scrubby yarn, it actually scrubs things a lot better. And you can use this as a face mask if you dare. Uh, it might be a little bit too rough for your face, but I'm one of those crazy people that probably will have horrible skin when I'm older. So I find that I like these a lot. Uh, it gets all the oil off my skin because I have fairly oily skin. Um, you can also use them for dishes. You can throw them right in the wash and it cleans them perfectly. So this, I've had um, the red ones that I have in my kitchen for the last three years or so and they are still mint condition. They haven't uh, pulled apart at all. I'm probably going to be using them for quite a few more years and it saves me so much on sponges. So alright, let's get started. To begin, I'm using my worsted weight cotton yarn and I'm going to be using some size 6 uh, needles. These are a 16 inch just circular so you can use your double pointed or however you want to do it, your capped ones. I prefer uh, circular needles just because I find that it's a little less messy to deal with. Um, and I'm going to use a long tail cast on method which means I'm going to make a very very long tail and I'm going to do my normal slip knot and then I'm going to... I have a full in-depth tutorial on how to do the long tail cast saw method which I'll link down in the doopity doo and I usually just kinda take my tail with my thumb and take my working yarn like I normally do and I'm gonna cast on 25 stitches so that's three four five six seven using my eight. thumb to pick up the working yarn through my tail basically that's how that works and again I have a full-on tutorial on how to do this method down in the doobly-doo if you want to go like full in how I'm holding it how I'm doing all this how many do I have cast on right now hey and see I can make things a mess up too there and I mess things up there how many do I have so that's 5 10 15 16 17 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. I have a huge tail, but I actually keep it fairly long. I keep about 8 inches of length for when I sew things later. So uh, there's that. I'm going to double check that this is 25 because I have a tendency to miscount. 5, 10, 15, 20 and 25. So here is where things are going to start getting warbly. The way that we do this for the entirety of this piece for knitting is you're going to do increases along the one side and you're going to do decreases along the other essentially making it into this kind of diagonal going piece which then will flip back and being into a circle when you sew the two ends together. I know that's confusing but just stay with me here. So essentially we're going to do increases along, we're going to flip our work obviously, and I like to do um, increases or decreases, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do um, decreases first and then we go to increases on the other side. So this side you will always do 
decreases. And on this side, you will always do increases. So here, I like to slip the first stitch when I can. When I'm adding my other yarn, I don't tend to slip, just because that's just how I do it. And I'm going to knit two together, and then I'm going to knit all the way to the last two stitches. We are going to also be alternating our yarn every two rounds. So this is technically when you cast on using the long tail method, you're, uh, that's one round already because you're essentially knitting the first round. So we're going to be transferring after this round into our scrubby yarn, which I honestly need another bowl for. Almost there. So once we get to the last two stitches, I'll show you how I do that. We're essentially going to knit the first, we're going to skip the first round of each one, and instead of doing, so like before, I would have just knit two together and then gone to the end and then increased. Whereas here, I'm going to be knitting, having one stitch in front of whatever increase or decreasing that you do. I find that this makes it a bit more smooth, so I've got two more stitches until I get my increase. Okay, so now here is our increasing round. All I do is just go through the front, and then I go through the back and I increase. I'll do that again one more time. So go through the front and then I go through the back and then you see I still have one stitch left so I'm gonna just knit that like normal. And right there. So now we just did our increase and now I'm going to leave my tail on here. Don't worry about weird seams or anything like that. I'm not going to cut my tails every time or anything like that. I'm just going to literally drag it along. So now I've got a ball of yarn that is a complete mess. There we go. Got it. This one's going to be a bit yellow. That's fun. Not, yellow is not my favorite color. They don't have a huge variety of choice at Hobby Lobby for the scrubby yarns. They don't even have a straight black. They also have, like, their I Love This Yarn doesn't match the red color that I was hoping it would match because I like the I Love This Yarn brand a lot more. Um, they have this red color that is really nice, but their scrubby doesn't match it well, so I can't put them together in a scrubby without it looking really bad. So I ended up having to use the AC Moore brand of red with the scrubby yarn that they had from forever ago. Anywho, so we are on an increase side. This side increases, and we're going to... I don't have to leave that long of a tail because I end up just mushing it inside of the base there. I'm going to pick up this stitch instead of just picking, like, just dropping it or whatever. I'm going to pick up this yarn through this and just knit like normal and then we're going to increase like we did before on this end. You always want to be increasing on the side that you have your increases. And so we're going to knit to the other end until we get to the last three stitches where we're going to do our decreasing because that's the decrease side. This gets a little messy with scrubby yarn but I find that I like how it looks a lot better and how it works a lot better. It's a lot more functional and I can do my dishes in a blast. I've actually got a lot of family members who love these so I make them for Christmas and I do them as random gifts and so now that's my fourth to last stitch and here we have one, two, three. So we're going to take our stitches and knit two together. I'm doing it through the back but that's just because it's easier. It doesn't really matter how you knit your two together. I find through the back makes it lean this way too. So that's nice. And so we're going to pick up our last stitch here and we're going to just do that. And so again, we're going to flip our work and this is still a decreased side. No matter what you do, on your decreases size, you're going to have your decreases. And on your increase, you're going to have your increase. It gets a little confusing when you're flopping back and forth, but just remember which side you decreased on. And then you just keep doing decreases. So this is my second round of the scrubby yarn. So I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to decrease because this is my decrease side and I'm going to knit until I'm back to the last two stitches. This pattern is essentially the same. I'm going to do an updated version of it on my Ravelry so you can see how it differs from the original pattern um, if you'd like to see how it's different and it's also going to be a bit more of an updated look for my pattern. I've updated them all and they look a lot nicer than they used to because I've actually figured out how to make PDFs uh, more seamless and more clear. Um, they were okay before, and I've always worked really hard to make sure that my PDFs look really nice, but I think that I've gotten them to be a lot better looking, and there's actually, like, 
links that you can do and put things in places so, like you can actually like, click on links in the the actual PDF so that's pretty exciting so I'm down the last two stitches and now I'm going to increase you're not gonna be able to tell what I'm doing with this scrubby yarn it's so hard to see stitches when you're working with scrubby yarn so you just kind of gotta do it by feel and so now I pull my tail a little bit I flip and you'll know when you're neat when you need to change again because you're back on the side where this is easy to go back to going with your um, normal cotton instead of your scrubby so now I'm going to fix this because there's yarn everywhere I'm going to pick up this stitch and then I'm going to do an increase again and you're just going to keep doing that until you get your work to about um, you need to repeat this so that um, you have nine rows of gray and nine like nine repetitions of this gray and nine repetitions of this scrubby you're going to end on a cotton end because of the way that i attach this so that it is seamless it's a little wonky but basically you want nine gray uh ends here i'll show you when we get closer to the end what i mean by nine so you're just going to keep repeating until you get to nine of these ridges of gray which essentially equals out to about 36 rounds. Yes, 36. Wait, 9 times. Whatever 9 times 4 is. 36. Yeah, 36. There we go. I can do math. And so you're going to keep going until you get to your 36th round. You want to have 9 repetitions of this gray. So I'll be right back and I'll show you what I mean by how many of these if you want. Be right back. Okay, so now that you've got your um, rows done, your repeats done, uh, you're going to get something that looks sort of horizontal like this. When you fold it, your two ends should be able to kind of touch and create like a tube that looks like this. It won't be perfect, it just kind of is what it is. Um, you're going to leave a nice 12 inch long tail, just like in the original video. Um, but instead of what I did in the original video, I've actually learned to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to go through from the back to the front, going through the left side of the stitch. Um, this is how we're going to do our Kitchener uh, stitch. Sorry, Kitchener stitch. There we go. Um, and the way that I do it is a little bit different. I actually go over the purl from uh, the previous round. Yes, it will create an inside... Um, seam that's a bit more intense but I find that it makes the outer part look more perfect so I am okay with that. I go through the side of the so when you're face having it face you like this you're gonna see these knit stitches that go into your your scrubby yarn see how there's a small V between that and your scrubby yarn you're going to go through that through that V and you're gonna keep your scrubby yarn out of this as much as you can because the scrubby yarn is just gonna get in the way. And then I go through the uh, side of the stitch from the front to the back, take that off, and then I go back into it into a solid motion where I go back into how I did it originally. So I go from the back to the front on the next stitch. And then I pull through. I do that all in one fell swoop, so now I can just go immediately over and go into the V from above and do that again and I'm just gonna repeat these same motions as I did before the only difference from the original video is that I am now going through um, the top knit part above the purl ridge from my original rows and you'll notice that it creates this perfect I'm gonna go through the front back and then through there and this perfect ridge so that's perfect right there there we go. Right through the V, go through here, and go through that. And you'll notice that your ribbing is completely lined up. You're gonna want to like kind of pull your tension each time you do go through each of these stitches. And go through here, go through that. I'm gonna start going a little bit faster because it's really easy once you get the hang of it. I already did uh, this Kitchener stitch before. Um, in the original video, so again, if you're confused, I do go a bit more uh, in depth in that video as well. This is just how I do this with the scrubby yarn. I find that it's easier to do these with scrubby yarn 
actually, just because um, I find that I can differentiate the different uh, rows quicker and easier, and I actually really love how the scrubby yarn works when I'm doing dishes. This is actually perfect when it comes to doing dishes. I love how these turned out. So you'll notice, now that I'm doing that, it's completely seamless. You can't see any seam. So that's what I meant when I said don't worry about having uh, your start and your end being both the same, um, being both the same, because it will eventually, you'll match them up and you'll go over the previous one is essentially what we're doing. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I get to the end. This is why I always like a nice long tail when I'm doing these because, well, you can always snip excess yarn. You can't really do much if you don't leave enough of a tail. You can work with more. <laughs> it's always easier to work with more and then just get rid of the excess, I find. So I always leave obscenely long tails and it's just real bad. Sometimes I'll notice that I've accidentally skipped a stitch so I end up fudging uh, things. It doesn't happen too often. I think I've got enough uh, stitches here to do this perfectly, but still. Alright, I'm gonna finish off. I'll get to the last stitch and I'll show you how that looks. We are on the last couple of stitches here, so we're gonna go through uh, right through here. Go through again. We're just keeping on, keeping on. We're gonna end our stitches on a um, like right around here. It gets a little weird because it's... There we go. So we're gonna go through this last stitch here. Go through and then go through that stitch. Go through and you can just pull right off. So here I like to do a double knot. I, these tails are a little bit shorter than I would have liked so I probably would do a 15 incher but I can still get it done. It's just me being I'd rather have it a little bit longer. You'll notice on the inseam, yeah, that's a little bit of an intense area. That's just how I do it. Um, how I finish these off is I'll take one of my tails, it doesn't really matter which one, and I go through the top of each of the um, non-scrubby rows. So here I'm going to go through this top pearl. You might have to wiggle a little bit on some of these. Then we're going to go through the top of the next pearl, go through the top of the pearl after that. So you should have eight uh, pearl rows that you go into. I like to go through them a couple of times, so I'll go around a few times. So I've got those three. I'm counting still. I'm going to put that on the inside just so that I can easily do it for the uh, repeat this on the other side. This is, yeah, that's four. There we go. Come on, and then there's five, then there's six, and then we're gonna go through seven, and this is the one right next to where we uh, began. So seven, we're gonna pull nice and tight, but not so t like careful with your cotton, because holy moly, sometimes when I use this, it can break it and it just shatters, and then I'll be like, this is the worst. I, I can't even manage. I hate it when I break cotton yarn. It's the worst. Okay, so we're gonna go through those stitches again and go around and go through all eight of those little pearl ridges that we already just went through. I like to go through right through quite a few times. That way it can be nice and tight and it can be dealt with that way. Oh, and this is why I don't like little small tails either. Nice and tight. And you'll notice that a little tiny uh, star almost looking thing is showing up there. And just keep going around, keep going around. I go around until I, I see it's really firm and then as soon as I'm comfortable with how it looks, I go around a little less with this round than I do with the other one because what I like to do with the other one is I'll take this I'll push it through the center and into the middle. No, not through other stitches. And not through the yarn. There you go. And I'll pull it back through the center. And then I like to double knot it closed just on the inside to make it nice and perfect. This gets to just go on the inside now. 
You can cut it short if you want to, but there's really no point. Then you're going to take the yarn that you've already pulled, both of them through the, the center and at this point, and you're going to take your longer tail and you're going to do the same exact thing uh, for this side. It'll be a little bit wonky, it'll be a little bit weird, but you just pick one and you start going through. So one, two, three, pull those through, four, I always count because I can easily try to go through things multiple times in a weird way and it's just... Oh hey, you went through the same two different pearl ridges on the same row. Six, seven, and then we've got... Yeah, no, that's eight. Now this is us going through them again. So we're going to go through them again. Go through the same stitches as many times as you can get them to go around. It'll become easier to see the stitches once you've started pulling on it because it starts making it very obvious very quickly. That way it makes it centered. You don't have to worry about how it looks. It's nice and even. And you keep tugging until you're comfortable with it. I like to go around on this side just because it's not, I'm not gonna be able to double knot like I did on the other side. Um, I like to go around quite a few more times just to say that I did so it won't unravel in any way. I'm sure there are other ways that you can get things to not unravel, but this is how I prefer to do it. Um, and I like to just go around as many times as I can really do it. And it becomes really easy once you've gone around quite a few times. Once you realize it's like, oh hey, this is really super easy. I like to go around. This is the tail's getting too short now, so now I'm going to just feed it through the center of the body. So I'm taking my stitch and going through the entirety of the center like that. I like to go through not a scrubby yarn row, but a gray row. So now that is a done to wash. I get to cut all my tails. I actually have scissors on hand because I actually made my desk a little bit more organized. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote for these scrubby toe washies. They are nice, they are even. I find that this way makes them a bit more um, just coherent and I've, I've gotten better at making these over time. So I wanted to do an addendum video. Uh, if you're confused by the formation of these, again, I do have another video on how to do this. It's one of my more popular videos. So I figured I would do an addendum on how I made it with scrubby yarn. They're super cute and I love this yarn that I'm using. It's called I Love This Yarn from uh, Hobby Lobby. And the only local place near me that actually has scrubby yarn is Hobby Lobby, so it's driving me crazy. My AC more doesn't have it. I also did a loofah with this. If you'd like to see my loofah pattern with the scrubby yarn, um, post down below and I can try to uh, get the video up for that. Hopefully we'll be coming up with some more videos on how to make more cute amigurumi. I might be doing an addendum for my cute little whales that I do. That's not a really good one. This is a good one. There you go. I've got little tags on them because I was selling them at a local shop. But I might do one just because I finally have a really decent layout now and the original uh, video didn't have a decent, um, didn't have the camera in focus and it was a little bit weird so I might just end up doing a, an, an, an addendum to that. I definitely am going to be doing um, some more amigurumi stuff with my Luna dolls uh, videos and amigurumi that I've been posting online. So stay tuned for that. Do all the social media stuff. I've got a Patreon. I've got all kinds of stuff that'll be linked down below. I'm not going to give you the same spiel five million times. I'm looking at possibly doing a series that I posted on the community board on whether or not on some local yarn shops that I uh, have in the area. Apparently, I didn't even know about this until my partner, who has nothing to do with yarn, by the way, came up to me and said, oh, I talked to somebody at my work and uh, she told me apparently there's this thing called a yarn crawl. Uh, kind of like how they do a bar crawl, but it's a yarn crawl, and they end up going to 21 different shops, and if you go to all 21, you get a bumper sticker, basically, which I thought was kind of cool, and I was thinking uh, for the longest time that I would do like a whole video series on local yarn shops, given that I live in Maine, and we have some amazing yarn shops in Maine, and I'm going to be sending out some emails for that. If you're interested in that, go to the community board and vote yes or no on whether or not you'd like to see that so far. Uh, the majority of you seem to be interested, so let me know uh, what kind of questions, what kind of things you'd want to know uh, as well if you are interested in that. I'm just really excited about it. I also have a couple other things in the works, like just some more subscription boxes, which I've been looking into, so stay tuned for that. Alright, end of my rant. Until next time, guys. Bye!